Hey, it's Chris Cato, your Chief Performance Partner and the author of Premiership Business. Now, today I'd like to tell you a story about the day I met Tora Bright and the strength of character that she showed that, that day, which, which I thought was a, a really great thing. However, also what I'd like to share with you is the similarities between great athletes and great businesses and the, if you like, the thought process and the preparation in their thinking required to get them to perform in that day. So I, I love the Olympic Games. I love the Olympic Games, and whether it's winter or summer. And look, the reason is, is when you watch, when you watch these athletes perform, compete in these finals, when they're lining up for that moment in their life against their competitors, coming down that slope, or whichever it may be, the work that has gone behind that is enormous. And it all comes down to that moment in time where they have to execute perfectly. And the beauty of it is that a lot of them are well prepared to carry that off. So how did I get to that position? How did I get to that position? And I want to share with you a few thoughts on perhaps how it is that you could be well prepared to deliver your value, to make sure that your the functionality of your services, how you relate to your customers is as best as it can be in terms of building your business and your brand over time. Just like a great athlete understands what to focus on to get the best out of themselves in any planned moment of time. So let me, let me um, tell you a little bit about myself, I guess. And you may have heard my story in the past, whether it's um, through a previous event that I've spoken at or, or maybe a, a webinar that I, I might have delivered in the past. However, look, I, I was a, you know, I guess I showed a little bit of promise when I was, when I was in my teenage years. I, I won you know, a national championship and competed reasonably well at um, national level. But then one day at one of these championships, I went bang and ripped my femoral spice from my bone. Uh, unfortunately, it never healed. Uh, we, we didn't quite get things right. And um, one of the things that I can remember, which, which still sticks to me to this day, is one day, uh, the following summer after the winter had passed, because um, uh, uh, obviously the, the previous summer had been a bit of a write-off after that event for me, the, I was um, warming up with a guy named Phil Kyoto. And Phil Kyoto at the time was the 100 meter, uh, under 20 100 meter record holder. 10.4 seconds electronically or something like that. And um, Phil said in jest, uh, he, he pointed at my leg and said, hey, Chris, hey, mate, looks like somebody shot you in the leg. I mean, I had a hole about the size of a tennis ball uh, in the back of my leg, which um, I can laugh at now, of course, but, but at the time that just killed me because, you know, it just, it just um, brought home to me mentally and physically that... That um, you know, my dreams were were in tatters, really, and it was never, I was never going to be, um, I was never going to reach you know whatever potential that that I may have had, um, and but look, I still love the sport, and and I actually you know I look back on that time and think to myself, look, I was really lucky, I was really lucky because because of that fleeting moment in time where I showed some potential, I got exposure to some great people, and. Now, David Colbert, who's now commentating on Channel 10, which is great, and, and uh, it's always good to hear a familiar voice um, when, you're, when you're watching TV and watching these sporting moments. It, I used to worship the ground David walked on. He was, he was, uh, I was in the same squad as David, uh, as in the same training group. Clearly, I wasn't training at the level David was, but, however, um, you know, I'd, I'd see David uh, quite often. I'd be the quiet kid in the background who didn't really say much, I suspect. And, and I used to worship the ground David walked on because David was a, a multiple Olympian, won a couple of Commonwealth Games, silver medals in the long jump, and a um, you know, very focused, very professional kind of guy. Uh, but also, um, because of the association with, with such a great group, you know, there was, in 1992, Lifford Christie came to Australia to train for the, ninth, for the Barcelona Olympic Games. And because of his association with David, and our squad, or the race we had, you know, uh, you know there was two nights, there was two nights a week where, where I, you know, I was I was within a few meters of a 
of one of the world's fastest men um, for the hundred meters, and that was that was great. That was great exposure. I mean, you, you get to you get to understand that these these guys who are you know competing at some of the most difficult difficult most competitive events in the world to prepare for. Why? Because they've got that one moment in time to to actually execute all their preparation to meant to be mentally focused to deliver that. That they are just normal people, just like you and I. But the difference is, is they're focused, and geez, they work hard. They work hard for what they do. Uh, I, I love the, um, the famous line from Thomas Edison, where he says, most people miss opportunity, because opportunity walks past wearing overalls and looks like work. And a lot of the time, people, people miss the opportunity because they f- they're afraid of the work that goes behind it. And these guys have... Um, uh, these great athletes that you see on TV have got the gumption to back themselves and to work hard for their dreams where a lot of people will just shy away so the opportunity never occurs but you, as a business owner as a business owner you've got that gumption you've got the guts and determination you're in that 5% of people you've got the guts and the determination and I honour you and I respect you so much because I know what it's like because I'm a business owner myself uh, how tough it can be and how focused you need to be and how effectively you need to be able to use your resources to get the most out of yourself and to build your business. So it was a great time in my life because I had exposure to these great people uh, which, I, which, I, which I hold dearly um, in my memories and, and also shape the way I think and, and the way I do things. So going back to the time that I met Torah Bright, now let me tell you the time that I met Torah Bright. So about four years ago, what I was doing four years ago is I was managing a group of product development executives. And what, what they did, um, what, what the product development executives did was they, they created conferences and they promoted conferences. They developed conferences and we promoted conferences. And Julie Ganidis, a great product developer who, who worked for me, she, she developed the uh, Brisbane uh, a Brisbane three-day conference that um, we had at the time. And involved in that three-day conference was a, if you like, a Sporting Heroes lunch where we had uh, Tora Bright. Uh, we invited Tora Bright and, and thankfully she accepted. And two other male Australian, well-known male Australian uh, athletes or sporting stars. And we had Mark Beretta, another TV host, another local TV host who was, uh, if you like, facilitating or chairing the conversation uh, between the sporting stars. Anyhow, so there I'm in the green room and, and, and as, as the stars arrived, my, my role was to make some small talk and, and get everybody to introduce each, each to everybody else and make people feel comfortable, uh, which um, look, a lot of these guys do so much of this that they're comfortable anyway. But um, Tora, actually, she's obviously a very attractive woman. And uh, can I just say this? I think she's more attractive in real life. Um, but anyhow, let's get back onto the topic. So she, she, uh, she was there and we we're making some small talk. And one of the male athletes or one of the male celebrities actually said to Tora, I asked Tora, Tora, so where, where do you live? And Tora turned around and said, oh, I live in Salt Lake City. And my jaw dropped when this male athlete actually went on to make some um, tongue-in-cheek comments about Salt Lake City and, and perhaps some of the... Uh, uh, the groups there, or you know, groups of people there who like to follow particular beliefs. Anyhow, much to Torah's credit, because she's so self-confident, and she's so composed, and she's so, if you like, complete and 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 happy with where she's at in in her life, and and if you like, uh, very confident in where she's at. She just responded. And just, and just basically said, look, perhaps, it's, perhaps these beliefs that these people have make their lives more fulfilling. And with that, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get an opportunity to interject, but um, with that, um, the topic changed and perhaps the, 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 um, the male sporting star uh, could read between the lines. And, and I thought that's just a great example of how a you know, self-confident person can handle all situations. Why? Because they... You know, they know what they're good at. They, aren't, they, they clearly believe in what they do. They clearly believe in their, their support structures. And that gives them the confidence to move forward appropriately. Gives them the move, confidence to move forward appropriately. So, but what I'd like to share with you in the next few moments really is, is look, what do 
great athletes or great sporting teams focus on? And if we'll just keep it at a high level, and how should you be focusing? What should you be focusing on as a business owner to make sure that you can be just as focused as they are? And let me let me let you in on a little secret here, in that there's sometimes people who are not in business think to themselves, oh look, you need to be a household name to be successful. You need to be a brand which everybody recognizes um, to be successful. But look, let's just let's just let's just get rid of that myth for a second. Let's just, you know, let's just wash that away. Because let's face it, successful business owners know that all they need to be is the best in their local area at what they do, or the best in their market niche at what they do, the best in their target demographic at what they do, and they will be very successful. They will make a lot of money and have a very fulfilling lifestyle. You don't need to be a household name. You don't need to be a world beater. You can be a world beater one day, but you don't need to start off as a world beater. You just need to start off as being the best in your area, your group, your niche, your product area, your demographic, and you will be very successful. So how can you focus your resources so you can be just like these athletes and use your resources most effectively, deliver that customer value just like the athlete does when they're standing there at the starting line, standing at the top of the hill, how, did they, how are they prepared so that they actually deliver and execute as best they can and get the best out of themselves in that moment in time? So how can your staff and your team get the best out of themselves in that moment in time? Now I'm going to share with you just quickly on things that you can think about to do that, to make sure you get the best out of yourself. So just um, follow me and I'll just, if you like, just show you just a quick few minutes on how we can actually do that. Come on then. Okay, so how is it? So how, how do these athletes, these great athletes, perform at their best in that specific moment in time? How do sporting teams perform at their best at the specific moments in time which they've planned months, years ahead for? Weeks, months and years ahead for. They've got a moment in time where, where, look, they've got to do it or they just lose. It's as simple as that. And sometimes your business is in a position like that. You've got a client, you've just got to deliver. You've got to deliver those goods and services. You've got to deliver that product. You've got to install that, that, that product. You've got to make sure the functionality works in the timelines that your customer is expecting. You've got to build whatever it might be, that piece of that project, that piece of construction equipment, that service, that product, that, if you like, that report, whichever it may be that you are helping your clients with, you are sometimes have to deliver in that specific moment in time. And how do you get yourself in a position where you can actually do that? Just like these great athletes do. These wonderful feats that you'll see at the Olympic Games or, or World Championships, whichever grand tournament it may be. Now there are three things, there are three things that great athletes focus on at a high level, at a high level. There's, a, it's, there's not that much to it. But how do you apply this to your business? And, and this, is, this is the critical link. This is the critical link. So the first thing that all athletes and teams are constantly working on is their technique. They're constantly working on their technique. Now you think to yourself, how often do you work on your technique? And you're probably thinking, what are you talking about, Chris? What technique? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, how about your selling technique? How often do you actually think about and talk to your sales staff about refining how they say things, what they say, the questions that they ask, how they upsell, cross-sell, how they highlight the key benefits and the value of the, your products and services, the conversations that they have and facilitate. How often are you refining the technique of your staff and yourself in regards to getting a better result for your organisation? How about your marketing technique. How often are you testing the results of your marketing campaign? How often are you testing the activities in your marketing campaign? What works and what doesn't? How you refine your copy? And how you phrase your key benefits? How do you get that engagement? How often do you refine your marketing technique? How often do you refine your marketing technique? Because again, 
your technique is critical and are you working on it? Are you working on it? How about your service delivery technique? How, how are you working on your service delivery technique? That relationship, that interaction with your clientele when it comes to delivering the service or completing that product or installing that product. How, how good is your technique in doing that? And when I say that, you know, what, are the, what are the phases? What are the actions that must take place? What are the, if you like, the best practice involved? Do, is it clear to your staff how they should go about their work? And are they improving that? What are you measuring to make sure that they're actually improving that? So these are all techniques. How about after sales service? What's your technique for after sales service? How are you carrying that through? How are you refining and improving your technique there? So what you see here, this is part of your game plan. When part of the technique of a team is their game plan. Well, how are we going to execute this appropriately? What are we working on to improve our selling technique, our marketing technique, our service delivery technique and touch points, our after sales communication and relationship building? What's your technique and are you refining that in your business? Because guess what? World-class athletes and leading teams, football teams, sporting teams of any kind are always working on their technique as part of their preparation. Secondly, what do, what do elite athletes do and teams do? They work on their strength. They work on their strength, whether it's endurance or whether it's power. They're working on it. They're, they're constantly refining it, getting it better. And how do you, what, what's your strength in your business? Have a think about what your strength in your business is. How do you work on the strength in your business? Well, part of the strength in your business are alliances. What alliances do you have with, with companies that are not competing against you, but share the same marketplace? share the same clientele? What partnerships do you have to build the strength of your business and the people who cooperate and help you procure clients and help you deliver services? So, what alliances do you have? How about staff? Staff recruitment. How good is your staff recruitment? Because your staff will add to your strength depending on how resourceful and how effective they are. So, how, how are you working on your staff recruitment at all? And your staff motivation. Because how efficient your staff are will increase the strength of your business. How, what, are they in the game? Do they believe in what you do? Do they believe in what you offer? Because if they do, and they're brought into what you're trying to do, your broader vision of your business, that increases the strength of your business. How about workflow? And documentation. So repetitive tasks are better down. Or you minimise wastage in your business through effective workflows. You have lean operations, you have just-in-time inventory management. That will all improve the strength of your business. Are you working on the strength of your business? How about asset utilisation? Or staff utilisation, if your staff are your assets that actually generate income. Asset or staff utilisation. Are you working on how effective you use your assets, the amount of hours that they're producing versus the number of hours they're not, or your staff, how effective are your staff? How much write-off is there? How much wastage is there in your production process? How effective are you using your assets? How good are your workflows? Are they documented and ingrained, the ones that work, and refined as well? Not just ingrained, but refined. How good are you recruiting the right people and motivating them? What are your alliances like with non-competing, so, like businesses? Because that all adds to the strength. So are you working on your strength? And the third item is psychology. Psychology is the third item that great athletes and great 
teams work on. And what is that? That mental preparation, the ability to know and focus that they're going to do what they have to do. And how do they do that? How do they get there? Well, part of it from a team perspective is culture. What's the culture of your business like? What's the, and from the culture comes your accepted behaviours. Your accepted behaviours. So what's your culture like? What's your accepted behaviours? And what drives your culture are the values, your values. The values that you have that you cascade to your business. That permeates the culture, that ingrains the accepted behaviour. Because that is the psychology. What's the default response that your staff have or you have when a client has an inquiry or a complaint or whichever it may be? And how you meet that is based on your psychology. Your psychology and how you're prepared to deal with those situations. How your staff are prepared to deal with those situations. And when you've got a team of people working for you, what are your team rules? What are your team rules? Where are we going with all this? As in, what are we trying to achieve? Is it clear to all your staff? Because in the end, this has to be linked back to your vision. Because what you want to do is you want your staff to have the right psychology to deliver the vision that you have for your products and services. Because that's what we're trying to achieve. So you think about a great athlete or a great sporting team. What do they do? They work on their technique. They work on their strength. They work on their psychology constantly. Constantly. So that when it comes to the big day, when it comes to that moment in time which they have to perform and execute, they are ready to go. They are ready to go. So what are you doing? What are you doing in your technique, whether it's selling, marketing, service delivery, after sales service? What are you doing in your strength, your alliance, your staff, your workflows, your asset utilisation? What are you doing in your psychology, your vision, your team rules, your values, your culture and accepted behaviours? What are you doing to get the most out of your business? So. I hope you enjoyed that and can take that away and use that appropriately uh, in the coming months. So now, make sure that you make some comments, you subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel because there'll be plenty of these videos coming out, that's for sure. And look, I'm just here to help and I'd, and I'd love to be able to serve you and your business, uh, take it forward and move forward like I have for my current clientele and what I've done for myself as well. So I'd love to be able to serve you. Subscribe to our, our video. Have a look on the, our web pages, which I'll list below, uh, for any upcoming seminars that we might have, which may be free. Uh, so you can come and, and meet with like-minded people and collaborate and also ask me some questions, if you like, uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. So uh, on that note, just remember, just remember, darkness is the first enemy of mankind. So make sure you surround yourself with people that enlighten your day, enlighten your staff, so you can get the most out of your life and get the most out of your business. So I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Bye for now.